When it's time to go look at homes in person, it can be a little daunting, maybe even a little frustrating if you don't know what to look for and how to know if it's the right home for you. So today I'm going to give you the 10 things to look for when viewing a house. And I'm also going to share my proven method to rate a home that works whether you're a logical or an emotional home buyer. That way you know when you've found the one. And as an added bonus, I'm also taking you on a tour of a new construction community on the south side of Atlanta in Fayetteville, Georgia, so you can put my method to work today. We'll be driving through the community so you can see what the neighborhood is like, and we'll also be going inside the model home as well. So let's get started. First, let's talk about this neighborhood real quick. This is Dixon Farm, and it is in Fayetteville, Georgia. It is in the Spring Hill Elementary School District, the Bennett's Mill Middle School District, and the Fayette County High School District. Right now, homes are starting in the 490s. Homes are uh, between 2,400 and 3,200 square foot. You have four and five bedroom plans along with two and a half to three and a half bath plans. Uh, the HOA in this neighborhood is $850 a year, and that is mainly for uh, the common area and maintenance upkeep for the year. Now let's get started with the 10 things to look for when viewing a home. Uh, and be sure to stay until the end because that's when we're gonna go over my proven method on to know when you found the home. So the number one thing to do, and I've done it in every video, but I haven't talked about it, is to check out the neighborhood. You're moving into somewhere more than just a home. You're moving into a community and you wanna make sure that that community matches what you need. And the only way to do that is to drive through the neighborhood. The next thing is also check out the landscaping. Um, you wanna make sure that there's no trees over the roof. You wanna make sure that there's no bushes touching the house. Um, you wanna make sure that the yard is sloping away from the house. And these are all things to make sure that your house uh, is upkept. If you have branches over your house, big, large tree branches, that could mean in the future a tree branch falling on your house. It can also mean uh, leaves are on uh, build up on your roof. That can cause early deterioration of your roof. You've also got to worry about bugs. That's a great way for ants, roaches, squirrels can get in your attic, uh, all by having branches over your roof. So you wanna make sure branches are not hanging over your roof uh, if you can help it. If not, plan on cutting them down. Uh, you, could, you could also need to make sure that there's no bushes touching the house because same thing with that. And then the sloping away is just to make sure that your foundation stays good. Um, if you have uh, water building up around the foundation of your house, you can have early settling, more extreme settling than you normally would. The last thing before you actually even get into a home is schedule it with your agent, not with the builder's agent, not an open house. Uh, you wanna schedule a private showing with your agent. The reason for that is because at an open house, you could have multiple people there. You could have um, an agent that's a helicopter agent that's right on top of you. You, don't, you may not feel as comfortable as you would with your own agent that's there to give you space, to let you take in the, the scenery, the house itself. You need to be able to be on your game when you're looking at homes. If you schedule an appointment with your agent, then that won't be a problem at all. You can take your time, you can breathe, and you can enjoy the home. Determine if it's really the right home for you. Now we can actually start talking about the inside of the home. The first thing to consider is as soon as you walk in the door, Besides your eyes, you need to be using your nose. Is there a smell in the house? Uh, do you have a pet smell like a cat or a dog smell? Do you have a musty smell? Think, things like that uh, may not be an issue or it could be a huge issue. Um, you know, with pets, if the pets in that house, like a resale home had gone on the carpet, is that something that can come out pretty easily or is that something that's in the subfloor that it's not going to come out without a lot of effort? Uh, musty smells, that's a sign of bigger problems too sometimes. Not all the time. It could just be, you know, no one has lived in the house for a while. Air hasn't circulated, but it could also mean mold, <laughs> uh, for example. Not necessarily every case is it mold, but that could mean things like mold. Uh, mildew, things that just aren't great. So first thing to do, smell. Second thing 
is look around. How is the natural light in the in the house? Is that uh, an important factor to you? Along with natural light, you want to make sure the windows are in places that you're okay with. Um, if you're in a neighborhood, having windows on the sides of your house, sometimes you got to determine if that's a good thing or a bad thing. If it's a neighborhood where the homes don't have a lot of space between each other, you're, look, you're staring into your neighbor's bedroom, for example. That's, that's not as desirable. You're always going to have that blind closed. So if that's not big of a deal to you, that's okay. But this is just something to keep in mind to look at. Number six, um, are there any cracks in the drywall or water stains on the ceiling? Now, when it comes to new construction, having a nail pop here and there, maybe a, a crack on a seam of drywall isn't that big of a deal. But if you're coming up with, you know, quarter inch, half inch cracks of drywall, not at a seam, like where two pieces of sheetrock came together, then that could mean foundation issues. Um, if you see water stains or stains on the ceiling, sometimes you'll see like little brown rings. That could mean that there is an active leak or there was a leak. Now it's time to visualize the setup of your house. Uh, a lot of times in a model home like this, they're putting in they have a, they hire a professional designer to come in and decorate the house. Uh, sometimes that's can be deceiving. Maybe they might put a queen sized bed in the owner suite because it's going to make the room look bigger. But you have a king size bed, so that's going to take up a little bit more room. So those are things to consider, um, and that's why a lot of times when I look at rooms, I point out it's a queen size bed here in the secondary bedroom it's a twin size bed or a full size bed that way we can get an idea of how things will fit you know if you have a king size bed and two nightstands and a dresser how is that all going to fit in the bedroom will it all fit uh if it can't fit is the closet space sufficient uh, you know I, this happened the other day the the owner suite was very small but they had uh, a his and hers closet situation that were the the one closet was the size of a small bedroom. Uh, the other closet was also a pretty decent sized walk in closet. So even though it wasn't wasn't huge, they were able to visualize not having their uh, other dresser there, just having a dresser where, for them to have their TV on in the bedroom because that was what they wanted, and they had the room. So it's very important to visualize if you have a large sectional or if they have a large sectional in the in the house, you know, if it's a resale home, sometimes people, homeowners care more about comfort than looks. So just because you think something is ugly, uh, <laughs> they may love that. They may be their favorite chair, or their favorite couch, and they love it. So try and not visualize their stuff there. Visualize your stuff. Visually move into the house to see if that will work for you. Next, while you're going through the home, you want to be kind of being mindful of where your feet are. Are you walking on a level floor? Uh, is it creaking? Is it built for someone that has one leg longer than the other leg? Um, those could be signs of foundation issues. Uh, for example, uh, you know, in older homes, homes do settle, uh, and you may have some some significant settling, but you need to make sure through an inspection that it's gonna be okay. And you need to already have that in the back of your mind. Is this something that I wanna fix? Or is this something that I'd rather pass on and maybe look for a home that's newer, that doesn't have the settling issues, maybe not find a home that has that's on a crawl space, look for a home that's on a slab or a basement where uh, having issues with settling like you do with a house on a crawl space may be an issue. Next, you wanna find out what appliances are staying with the home. Uh, in most cases in Georgia that I've come across, the stove stays, the dishwasher stays, but it's a toss up 50 50 on whether the refrigerator stays. And only about one out of 10 times, maybe even less, maybe 5%, 2 to 5% of the time, the washer and dryer stay. So you need to, you need to keep that in mind too what's staying, what's going. Usually you can get that uh, from your agent. They can, they can get a what's called a seller's property disclosure. And I can let you know through that what's staying and what's going. It's signed by the seller. So they've already agreed to those things staying or going. 
And for the last thing, you want to look at the three major systems and you don't have to be licensed to do this. We're just still viewing the home for the first time. So just a very basic, what you see uh, is okay. And that is look at the roof, look at the HVAC system and look at the water heater. Uh, if they're all fairly new, that's a good sign. If sometimes on a home, the, the roof, sometimes Georgia gets storms so maybe a shingle or two may be missing. So that's something you could visually see on your own. Um, maybe the uh, AC unit outside looks a little old and faded. That could be a sign that it's time to be changed. Same with the water heater. If it looks a little rusty or uh, looks old, these are things to consider. And it, you don't have to be licensed to look at it. You can just see that it's uh, already starting to get old. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then if you like the home still, you get it under contract, just be mindful of things that you might have to fix. Be mindful of those things when the home inspection comes back. Uh, but yeah, those are the 10 things to look for when you're visiting a home for the first time. And now to go over my proven method. So uh, this helps you verbalize your thoughts. It helps you go from not knowing why you don't like the home, why you just can't put a finger on it, to being able to actually verbalize what needs to be changed for you to like the home. Um, it helps if you don't like the home to know what you do want to make it to where you do like the home, uh, what changes need to be made. It also helps you start to get cold feet. You're like, you. Ha everyone has that moment of, oh no, what did I just get myself into? So. Uh, whenever that moment happens, you can go back to this and you can take a deep sigh of relief and breathe and know that this is the one. Um, and that is, you're able to absorb everything. You do it, like I said, on a private showing. You give the house a one out of 10. Pretty simple, right? There's a catch to it though. A seven or higher is worth putting an offer in on. Why a seven out of 10? because there's no such thing as a perfect 10 home. So a seven means that there are things that you are settling on, um, but it's good enough for you to put an offer in on the home to live in that home. If it's, it's okay for it to be a 6.9 to where if there was one more thing on that home that was different, you'd put in an offer in on it. And it makes you very critical of the home. You know, a lot of my buyers, all of my buyers that put a number on the home are able to articulate what they don't like about it. Um, and there's nothing wrong. It's not my house. I, did, I tell them every time it's not my house. I did not grow up in the home. This, it's not going to offend me. Whatever you say, it needs to come out. You verbalize it so I can hear it. Um, I need to know what you like and don't like about a home so I can work for you. If you just keep it to yourself or you don't know why you don't like a home, then we can't find you the right home. So let's just say we go through this home that we saw today and you're like, it's, it's a six and a half. It's real close. I really like a lot of the stuff, but I don't know, just something about it. And then we talk. Uh, what did you think about the kitchen? Uh, the kitchen was a little small. Okay, so if the kitchen was a little bit bigger, would that make it a seven? Uh, and then we get into more stuff like, okay, the owner suite was a little too small, or I don't need a sitting room and a dining room in my home. I just need one or the other that's wasted space for me or whatever it is. And then, you know, I've had people tell me uh, that they didn't like the home because it reminded them too much of where they were currently in a, in, in a rental. Um, they Even though they were going from being renters to homeowners, they didn't want to have the same situation. They were still wanting to improve theirs. So we were able to articulate that. We were able to find why they didn't like the home because they were sitting there. They were like, this home has everything that we want, but we don't know why we don't like it. And they, the, the wife, she's a therapist. And we had our breakthrough moment of realizing why they didn't like it. And it was because it reminded them of where they were now or at that time. So. It's a proven method. Uh, it works with my clients that use it. There are some times where they can't use it, and those are the ones that struggle to find a home later on. 
because they're not using that method. When they start to learn, when they start to learn my ways and they start to use my method, then things start to click, then we can move forward. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my method. So now that you've got my 10 things to look for when viewing a home and my proven method on how to grade a home, are you ready to get from where you are to where you want to be? Give me a call, shoot me a text, or an email today, and my team will get started working for you. Contact information is below and in the description, so reach out anytime, and I come out with new videos every week with exclusive Atlanta community tours, all while educating you with everything you need to know when buying a home in Georgia. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next week. Thank you